Son, I'm just doing the subwoofer crawl where you crawl around the room, you put your subwoofer on the couch, and you put your speaker on my couch? You have to put it on the couch to do this crawl. Dad. Oh, come on, Dad. No, no. Bring your butt Dad. here oh, now. No, no. No. I'm gonna wear your behind no. out. I will no. <laughs> tell your mother what you just did to her couch. She's gonna be pissed. Yo, Kippy Sky here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm making a video requested by one of you, one of my subscribers. If you guys aren't familiar with my channel or maybe have forgotten, I have a lot of different subs in my system, but my most powerful two is one, my Rhythmic G25 HP that I've had for a few years now. Love that thing. It's a completely sealed, huge sealed subwoofer. It has two 15 inch drivers and it's a total of 1800 watts RMS. It is a beast of a sub, completely flat, gets down to about 12 hertz. Well, I wanted another Rhythmic G25 HP, but at the time they've increased in price to almost $3,000. So I decided to clone my own and I call it the Rhythm Mimic. I did a whole playlist on this if you wanna see this, but I made my own Rhythmic G25 HP, building my own box, grabbing my own 15 inch drivers and completely sealing it off. So I built it based off of the G25 HP. So it is also a dual 15 inch sealed, massive sealed subwoofer that can handle 2000 watts RMS. So I tried to make it as identical as possible inside and out. One of you guys in the comment section asked me, I'm curious, how well does your subwoofer that you built compare to the subwoofer from Rhythmic, the G25 HP? Because you guys know I want it to be a really close clone, but does it really compare? The Rhythmic G25 HP at the time cost me $2,700. That's a lot. But the one that I built cost me about, I don't know, 1200 bucks, including the amplifier to power it. So it didn't cost me nearly half as much to make, but do I even get nearly half the performance? Well, I have some graphs behind me. Let's take a look. Hello, and welcome to my classroom here. I have Room EQ Wizard pulled up, and I'm gonna show you guys three different measurements. I'm gonna show you, first measurement is gonna be just the store-bought sub, my Rhythmic G25 HP. Then I'm gonna show you the Rhythmic. That's my DIY sub that I built. And then I'm going to show you both of those combined together for a total output. So this blue line here is the Rhythmic G25 HP. This is the store-bought subwoofer. And this is without any calibration. There is no mini DSP. There is nothing going on with this sub. This is its own response in my room, in my listening position. So this is just how the sub sounds, where it's placed. And for what it is, this is not a bad line. This is a pretty smooth response. Now, of course, I haven't measured from 20 hertz up to 70 hertz because that's about where my crossover is, is about up to 70 hertz, maybe 60 hertz. So I measured within my crossover range and you guys can see it's not a bad line. 20 hertz going up to 30, not too bad. We got a little bit of a peak around between 30 to 35, and then it kind of smoothens out from 35 on to 70, stays pretty linear from that point. So this is a really nice 
graph here. And what I can do, if I was to calibrate this, what I would do is probably take this frequency up here between 30 to 35, and I would lower it to make it more linear with the rest of the line. And that would be a really nice response. You can also take 20 hertz between 20 and 25 and raise them up a couple of dB maybe three or four dB, and this will make the line a little bit smoother too. Depending on how loud you listen to your system, you gotta be careful, but a little bit of boost won't hurt, just don't go crazy with it. So this is the Rhythmic G25HP, the store bot sub. I'm gonna remove this one and take a look at the Rhythmic. This is my, my DIY sub that I built. And what you notice is it's a similar line, but between 20 Hertz up to 30 Hertz, it's a little bit less of an output. I'm gonna try to zoom in for you guys on the screen and maybe you guys can see this graph just a little bit better. So between 20 to 25 Hertz, it's not as strong as the G25HP, the store-bought sub. We actually have a little bit of a dip between 20 to 22 before we take off from there. So this line is not as pretty. What I would do to this line is I would probably check my placement and make sure that my sub is placed in a good spot and make sure that I'm not losing any base with where I have it placed in the room. Now, naturally, this is not gonna be as good as the G25HP because my subs don't dig as low as the G25HP. They're not rated to dig down to 12 hertz like my G25HP is. They're rated down more like 16 or 17. So naturally, I'm losing some base just because of the drivers that I'm using. But take a look between 30 to 40 hertz, right in this region here, 30 to 40 hertz is actually louder. There's more output on my DIY sub than there is on my store-bought G25HP. And as you go through, it's pretty much the same as the G25HP. Now we do have some trouble spots here between at, well, right about 58 hertz and right around 68 hertz, we have a pretty significant dip that we could easily fix with a mini DSP or some sort of calibration and make that look pretty. So if I bring back the Rhythmic G25 HP in comparison, these are the two lines. The blue line is my store-bought sub and the orange line is my DIY sub. And you can see they're not actually that much off. Between 20 to 25 Hertz, of course my G25 HP has more output, but as soon as you get past 30 Hertz, it's all DIY sub from there. All DIY has more output between 30 to 50 than the G25 HP. Now again, we do have that trouble spot that we would have to fix, but that's okay. We can take care of that with a, with a DSP of some sort. So the only kind of standout section is the lower response. The G25 HP does dig lower than my DIY sub, but I knew that when I built it. So check this out right here. I'm gonna get rid of the blue line and the orange line, and I'm gonna show you a teal colored line. This is both subs combined together. Here you go. This is how my subs sound in my room, in my listening position without any EQ. And this does not look that great. We have plenty of output between 20 to 30 Hertz, and then it has a huge peak between 30 and 40, then starts to drop down, and now we still have that same problem. So my DIY sub is causing me a little bit of an issue between the 58 range to the 65, 66 range here. Like I said, we can fix this, but what would I do with this here? Well, there's two things I would do to this line. I would lower this down about maybe five to 10 dB to make it more linear. I would completely take away some output here with my DSP and make this line a lot more smoother. This is a big, broad peak, so I would want to lower between 30 hertz to maybe 40 or 42. I would lower that to make it more linear and get a smoother response. And then down here between 58 to 68, I would raise just a tad to make those more linear as well and make this line a really smooth response. So this is a very correctable line with these two subs. Adding subs probably wouldn't help this. Correcting the two that I'm using would correct this. So let me bring back the Rhythmic G25 HP. Let me bring back the, the DIY Rhythmic sub and this is all the graphs together. So again, orange sub, DIY, blue sub is store-bought and the teal color is both of them combined. So I'm getting 
With both subs combined, a much louder output all the way around except towards the tail end of the frequency response, but most of the response between 20 hertz all the way up to about 50 hertz, I'm getting a much louder response with both of these combined than I did with each of them individually. So I can take this line and make it look like prettier, but overall my subs are complementing each other together and giving me a very, very nice output. All right guys, so sometimes all this talk can be a lot to process, but the moral of all of this, what all did this mean to you? Well, you can save yourself a lot of money by DIYing your sub. You wanna go in with an idea of what you're trying to achieve. Do you want a sealed, sealed box and get a really smooth, buttery sound? Do you want a ported box and have a lot of output? What are you looking for? It was really easy for me to know what I wanted because I really love my G25 HP. It is a phenomenal sub. And I knew that I want another one and I still want another one, but I don't want to fork out $3,000 right now. So I made my own and got really close to the capabilities as buying a new $3,000 Rhythmic G25 HP. So that just goes to show that for a literal fraction of the cost, you can replicate a lot of these companies' subwoofers with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of hand eye coordination, a little bit of handy tool work. You can really make yourself some subs. If I knew this going in, I could have made two of these subs for the same price as one and had a way louder experience. Now, I don't regret buying my G25 HP, and a graph doesn't tell you all about your sub. It doesn't tell you how it sounds. It tells you how loud it is, but it doesn't tell you how it sounds. So there's still a reason to buy store-bought subwoofers. That's why I want another G25 HP, because overall, it sounds better, and I have more options. It has tons of options for me to change I can boost things, I can cut things off, I can, there's so many different calibration tools on my subwoofer that my DIY does not have. So there's a reason to still buy, you know, store-bought subs, especially when you get higher in price, you usually get a, you know, bigger reward when you buy a more expensive sub. So this just goes to show that you can save some money and still get very similar performance if you know what you're doing. But at the end of the day, it is preference and you have to know what you're doing or know somebody who does so that you get your money's worth. Otherwise, you might as well just go and buy yourself a store-bought sub and know what you're getting from the factory. So I personally am very happy with the performance that both of these subs are, have been giving me. I actually have, I think I have three subs now in my system. I have four, I'm only using three. I've only showed you two because they're very similar to each other. So I wanted to show you guys this um, so that you guys can see the performance that you get out of DIY versus buying it online or buying it in the store. Um, but like I said, it doesn't show you how it sounds, but it shows you how competitive it can be when it comes to frequency response. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of a video like this. I don't do a lot of videos talking about graphs, but it is really cool to see what your system is doing instead of having to guess. It's really nice to be able to put a microphone in the room and measure what my system is doing because now I know what it's doing and I know what changes that I wanna make in my DSP or calibration. So it's a really cool tool. Let me know if you guys like videos like this and I'll be more than happy to do more. I can do this with my speakers plugged up, my four standing speakers, my KEFs, they weren't plugged up during this. It was just subwoofers. So I can plug in my KEFs and see how it affects the bass. Whatever you guys wanna see, let me know down below in the comment section. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already and we will see you guys in the next video. K-Pace guy out, peace.